Yes, Ms Orr. Commissioner, we move now to a case study concerning Rabobank. And the first witness in that case study is Wendy Brower. Yes. Now, uh, Ms Brower, would you prefer to make an oath or take an affirmation? An oath is fine. Thank you. Swear the witness, please. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you very much. Do sit down. Ms Brower, your full name is Wendy Jolene Brower. Yes. And you live at an address known to the Commission in Theodore in Queensland? Yes. What is your occupation, Mrs Brower? I'm a farmer or grazier. And Mrs Brower, you've been served with a summons to attend and give evidence? Yes. Uh, do you have that summons there with you? Yes. I tender that summons. Give it 4.30, the summons to Mrs Brower. And Mrs Brower, you've made a statement dated the 21st of June 2018? Yes. Are the contents of that statement true and correct? To the best of my knowledge, yes. Thank you. I tender that statement. Exhibit 4.31, the statement is Brower, 21 June 18. Mrs Brower, we hear your accent. Where were you born? I was born in the United States. And when did you move to Australia? Um, when I was married in 1993. And do you and your husband have children? Yes, we have three. And do you and your husband own a farm? Yes, we do. What's the name of that farm, Mrs Brower? Kyora. Kyora? Yes. And where is Kyora? It's southwest of Rockhampton in central Queensland. How far from Rockhampton, roughly? Uh, 280k. Thank you. And what sort of farm is it? We have beef cattle and we make various types of hay. And how big is the property? It's um, 2,149 hectares. Any houses on the property? There are two. Any other buildings on the property? Yes. There are two sheds, three sheds. Three sheds. And you breed and background cattle on the property, is that right? Yes. Could you explain what backgrounding cattle means? Backgrounding is a one word explanation for growing and um, putting weight on cattle to get them into feedlot weight. Mm -hmm. And how many cattle do you tend to run on Kyora? Uh, 900,000. And you sell most of your cattle to feedlots, is that right? Yes. And how long has Kyora been in your family? My husband and his parents moved there in 1974. And did you and your husband buy the farm from your husband's parents? Yes. When they retired, we took over the farm in 2002. And when you took over the farm, did you take over the liabilities of the farm as well? Yes. And were the farm's operations at that time financed by the Commonwealth Bank? Yes. Okay. Now, in 2005, did you and your husband refinance the Commonwealth Bank facilities? Yes, we did. And who did you refinance with? Rabobank. And why did you move across to Rabobank? Well, we wanted a fresh start on our own, but we were really happy to go with the philosophy that Rabobank was a rural bank, so we thought that they would understand the ebbs and flows and the ups and downs and the uncontrollable factors that um, we face as farmers and graziers. And we paid a bit more for that. Their interest rate was dearer than the big four banks, and we were happy to do that. And was your refinance arranged through a rural bank manager from Rabobank who worked at the Dolby office? Yes, it was. Now, there is a non-publication order in place in relation to that uh, bank manager's name, so I'll just refer to him as the bank manager. Okay. Uh, now, in April of 2005, did you enter into a facility with Rabobank? Yes. And that facility was for $700,000? Yes. Uh, and it had a term of 15 years? Yes. And uh, you refinanced two existing Commonwealth Bank facilities, is that right? Yes. And you borrowed an additional amount for working capital? Yes. All to make up the single $700,000 facility, is that right? That's right. 
And do you recall why you needed working capital at that time? <clears throat> um, we were rebuilding our cattle yards. They were old wooden yards, and we made nice new steel, safer yards. And um, by trading cattle or backgrounding cattle, they come and go, and so we needed cash to keep buying cattle and get that rolling around properly. Yes. Now, you've annexed the letter of offer that you got from Rabobank offering you that $700,000 facility to your statement. Is that right? Yes. And then a few months later, in late August 2005, uh, did Rabobank offer you a second facility for $200,000? Yes, they did. And that also had a 15-year term? Yes. And uh, why did you seek that additional amount of $200,000? Um, it gave us a little bit more working capital, but we were going to buy an investment property. Mm -hmm. And you've annexed the letter of offer for that facility to your witness statement as well? Yes. And then about a year later, in July 2006, did you increase the amount of the first facility from 700000 to 800000 Yes, we did. And did the expiry date on the facility remain the same? as the original facility? Yes. yes. Okay. And you've annexed your application for that increase to your statement as well? Yes. Then in 2007, did you and your husband decide that you would temporarily relocate to the United States? Yes, we did. And why did you do that? Adrian told me that he'd always wanted to live in America. Um, and we thought that it was a good time to move our family. Our kids were still young enough. They didn't have um, those kind of lifelong relationships like boyfriends or girlfriends or they weren't already in boarding school and um, we thought it would be a great opportunity for them to be able to spend an extended period of time with my family. And how long did you plan to relocate for? Two years. Okay. And having made that decision in 2007, in 2008 did you apply for another extension to the facility, uh, taking it from 800,000 to 1 million? <clears throat> yes, we did. Uh, uh, and the 200000 that you got under that increased facility, uh, do you recall what you used that for? I'm fairly certain that we used it to buy the house we lived in in America. Yes. And again, you've annexed the application for the extension of that facility to your statement. Yes. And the expiry date on the facility, did it remain the same original expiry date? Yes. Yes. Then early in 2008... Uh, did you lease Kaiora out to another farming family in the region? Yes, we did. Uh, and did you seek and obtain Rabobank's consent to that lease? Of course. And how long was the term of the lease? Three years. And was there any option to renew? Yeah, there was a two-year option to renegotiate and renew at the end. And did you or your husband have any discussions with the lessee about um, whether that option was likely to be taken up? Yes, we did. We um, spoke to them at great length about what they would like to do and what their plans might be, and they definitely um, <coughs> were interested in an option. Mm -hmm. And did the lessee bring their cattle onto Kaiora? Yes. And what did you do with your cattle? We sold them. Mm -hmm. And when did you then move to the United States? We left on the 15th of March 2009. Okay. And once you'd left, uh, did the lessee and his family move into one of the houses on Kaiora? The lessee's daughter and her husband did, yes. Now, a few months after you moved to the United States in March 2009, did you receive an email from your bank manager at Rabobank about a farming property that had come onto the market? Yes, we did. Now, you've annexed that email to your statement, and I'd like to take you to it. If you have a copy of your statement there, it's Annexure 5, RAL 0002 So this is an email you received from the bank manager on the 26th of June 2009? Yes. Uh, having moved to the United States in March 2009? Correct. We see that the bank manager says to you, Adrian and Wendy, hope all is well in the land of the free. 
have just heard that Jamboree is on the market. This is Tom Campbell's property on the southern boundary of Paul and Marina's property, Nankeen, so not that far from Kaiora. 7,049 hectares all up, consisting of 5,515 FH. Freehold. Freehold and 1,534 forestry lease. Not sure of a price at this stage, but would imagine around the $4 million mark, possibly less, should run about 1,000 breeders. Can obtain a little more detail if you think you might be interested. That was the email you received? Yes. Were you looking to buy another farming property at this time? No, we weren't. What, what did you think when you got this email? Well, I thought it was bad timing. We just moved to America. The kids were just settling in. Um, you know, we were just catching up with family. But it was an interesting prospect. Adrian knows the country there. And did you discuss the prospect with your husband? Yes. And was he interested? Yes. Uh, and why was he interested? He knows the country for one, so he knew what it was capable of, that it would be good um, for what we wanted it for. In our expansion plans, we would like a cow block, so one that will just run cows and that we can wean calves off of. Can you explain what a cow block is? Well, cow block is a bit rougher block. In, in my terms, cow, a cow block is a block that's um, a bit rougher, probably just got a lot of native grass, could have too many trees. It's something that's just going to maintain the condition of your cows. Once they're mature, they don't need to get any fatter. They just need to maintain and incubate well. So what sort of cows do you put on a cow block? Uh, mature ones. So to breed or yes, to... Yes, sorry. <laughs> yes, breeding cows. Breeding cows on a cow block, yes. is that right? Yes. Okay. Now... Uh, did you decide to seek more information about the property from the bank manager? Yes. Uh, now, we see your response to the bank manager in your sixth exhibit, RAL 0002 We see your email on the 29th of June at the bottom of the page. You say more information would definitely be helpful and I will give this email to Adrian. Thanks so much for keeping us informed. Adrian is great mates with Marina. I'm sure he must have told you. She's keeping a horse for him while we are here. Look forward to the details. That was your response to the bank manager. Yes. And we see his response to you in the email at the top of the page on the 30th of June. Uh, we see that he attaches some maps and some property details and he tells you very confidentially at this stage, I have spoken to Paul Wright and he and Marina are interested in a portion of the property and the vendor is not interested in selling a portion. Paul is interested in approximately 5,000 acres of the freehold which would leave approximately 8,600 freehold plus the 3,800 leasehold. Vendor is apparently looking for somewhere around $350 an acre. Too much, question mark, for the freehold. I would, with, I would expect minimal value apportioned to the leasehold. That would make your purchase price around $3 million. You could carry six to 700 breeders. Paul seemed to think that the portion he's not looking to buy contains the better country and also all infrastructure. You probably already know, but Paul used to own Jamboree. The offer's currently with Paul at the moment. Property is not yet listed with an agent. I just think there might be a mutual agreement that would suit all three parties, Wright, Brower and Campbell here. It would appear to fit your price range, and at least you know you would have one good neighbour with knowledge of the country. If you're interested, I might get you to email Paul and Marina direct to discuss, as I'll be out of the office for the next couple of days. I'm going up with Paul tomorrow to have a look at the property and have also been over the property previously. Apparently there are a number of other interested parties, but at the moment it would appear that Paul still holds the offer, possibly jointly with you. The property would need to be surveyed and split, but should not be an issue. That was the response from the manager to you? Yes. 
So the Wrights were another farming family who you knew and they were interested in purchasing a part of this property called Jamboree, is that right? Yes. Uh, and we see that the bank manager says to you in this email that the remaining part um, he thinks you could get for around $3 million, is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, now, a few weeks after this, on the 22nd of July, you got a further email from the bank manager about financing the purchase of Jamboree, uh, which you've annexed at Exhibit 7 to your statement. RAL 0002 0003 We'll just wait while that comes up on the screen, Mrs. Brower. That's okay. Here we are. Perhaps we could have that page and the following page on the screen together so we can see the entirety of the email. So this is the 22nd of July. <coughs> we can see there that the bank manager says, firstly, expect to see Adrian tomorrow morning on his way to Brisbane to fly out. So by this time, your husband Adrian had made the decision to travel back to Australia to have a look at the property, is that right? Yes. Yes. And we see that in this email, the bank manager says he's done a, a few quick figures with regard to income and loan serviceability. And do you see there that he deals firstly with your existing facility limits? Yes. And they are $1.2 million. At that time you had the original facility which was now at $1 million and the second facility which was 200000 is that right? Yes. So existing limits of 1.2 and he's talking about an increase of $3 million which would give you a new total limit of $4.2 million, is that right? Yes it is. And in the next part of the email um, do we see that he does some calculations about the interest that would be payable if you took up the new facility and in the final line of that part he estimates that the interest you would have to pay would be three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars a year yes and we then see his analysis of your income now were you and your husband working in the united states at this time a part-time uh, and what sort of part-time work were you doing um at uh, this time, I think I was working in a bead shop. And your husband? Uh, he would do odd jobs like drive a truck or work with a carpenter or something like that. So how were you funding uh, your lifestyle in the United States? We transferred money from our income here to there. And your income here was lease income from Kaiora, is that yes, right? that's right. And is that what we see referred to as Simmons, $200,000? Yes. So the Simmons were the, f the farming family who you'd leased Kiowa to? Yes. For $200,000 a year? Yes. Then we see a reference to Campbell, $170,000. What was that a reference to? That was a um, reference to the lease back of Jamboree by the vendor. So it, by this point you discussed that if you bought Jamboree, you would want to lease it back to the vendor. Is that right? Yes. Uh, and you hope to get $170,000 a year um, from the vendor leasing back the property? Yes. And that gave you, according to the bank manager, a total income of $370,000 a year? Yes. Uh, then we see the bank manager dealing with your expenses. And he says to you, only expenses are rates, insurance and water. So there is potential to allow for capital expenditure on regrowth, control, etc. each year. You see that? Yes. And then he says that his figures 
don't take into consideration that the $200,000 loan is serviced from rental income and not the rural enterprise. If this is the case, then that's an additional $15,000. What, what did you understand him to be referring to there? Um, the $200,000 limit loan that we had with Rabobank. Okay. And that our rental properties were paying the interest. Paying the interest on your $200,000 loan. That's what I take it to mean, yes. And then the bank manager looked at funds that you currently had available to you. Is that right in the yes. next part of the email? And he says, FMD, 147,000, question mark, question mark. What was that? That was our, our, the combined total of our farm management deposits. I see. So you had 147,000 in farm management deposits. Yes. And then he refers to your million dollar loan and tells you that you have 260,000 undrawn on the million dollar loan. Is that right? Yes. And your $200,000 loan, you had 67000 undrawn on. Yes. And then we see there's a reference to stamp duty, which he tells you will be around 120000 yep. And he tells you he's not sure what the deposit would be yet, but you should be able to handle this from current available funds. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So these were the calculations that the bank manager sent to you to assess whether you would be able to service this loan? Yes. Okay. And you responded to this email the following day and we have your response as Annexure 8 to your statement. RAL 0002 0003 3018. Now, uh, am I right in understanding that to respond to the bank manager, you inserted some text in black in the body of his email? Yes. So we can see that uh, in the part dealing with interest uh, uh, towards halfway down the page, you said to the bank manager, what will our current interest rate be? What will the current interest payment be? I've got to get these figures working in my head. Do we refinance the current one million line of credit into the trust name as well, but leave the fixed portion of 350,000 in the current setup? The new loan will be in the name of Tim Shea Grazing Trust, hoping to keep the current Shea Tim Proprietary Limited as trustee for Tim Shea Grazing Trust checking account. It would be so much easier. Then in relation to expenses, in response to the bank manager's statement that the only expenses would be rates, insurance and water, what did you say in response to that? I told him not to forget our living expenses. Yes. And then in response to the assessment of funds that were available to you, can you read what you wrote there? Do we have to cash these in? It's probably better if we can leave this alone so that we can have some cash to work with. Yes. So. Um, was it your position that you didn't want to disturb the money that you had in the farm management deposits accounts? Yes, very much so. Yes. All right. So around this time, your husband Adrian had travelled to Australia to look at the property, to look at Jamboree. Yes. And when Adrian returned to the United States, did you discuss his visit to the property? Yes, we did. And what did he tell you about that? Look, he really liked the block. He was really comfortable with it. He knew and was very, very confident in its capabilities to run cows and calves to winning. And yeah, he was really, really keen. Um, he was very nervous about the cash flow situation and how the business part of it would all work. When we got back, as we were basically starting from scratch, we had no cattle. We were basically d depending on the lease income. And uh, did he tell you that he'd discussed the cash flow situation that he felt nervous about with the bank manager? Yes, at, at length. And what had the bank manager's response to that been? Our bank manager um, suggested that we seek a loan that was more than what we needed so that when we came back to Australia to begin our business again, that we had funds to draw on. 
and what was the idea about um, what would what you would use those funds for when you came back to Australia? Our plan at that point was to, as when we came back from America, the first property Kyora would be coming off lease. We expected that um, option to be renegotiated, so we would keep a few paddocks and start stocking Kyora. The lease on Jamboree would have had around 15 months or something still to go. Um, so we would be able to then use the money to stock Jamboree as well. To use which money? The, the undrawn loan amount. The, the money left on the loan? Is yes. It? Yes. Okay. Uh, and what did you and Adrian ultimately decide about the purchase of this block? We decided that our bank manager had come up with reasonable options and was happy to back us and to help us out and we decided to do it. And when you say happy to back you and help you out, in what way did you understand that he was backing you and helping you out? By providing the extra money in the loan to enable us to buy cattle when we returned. Yes. And did you plan to buy cattle uh, all at once or progressively when you returned? Progressively. Yes. Now, having made the decision uh, to purchase the block, did you and Adrian then sign a contract of sale for the portion of the block that's discussed in these emails? Yes, we did. And when did you sign that contract? I believe it was around the end of August. Mm -hmm. So that's in 2009? Yes, it yes. is. And was the contract subject to finance? It was. And can you recall what the purchase price was? Not exactly, but it ended up being around $2.8 million was the settlement cost. Yes. And after you signed that contract of sale, you had more email exchanges with the bank manager about finance for the purchase, is that right? Yes. And you've annexed one of those emails as an extra 10 to your statement, RAL 0002 0003 Is this an email that you received from the bank manager on the 17th of September 2009? Yes. And do we see there in the first paragraph that the bank manager said to you, Sydney have come back to me with a few questions, mainly to do with the rental properties and to your living expenses whilst overseas. Who, who did you understand Sydney to be, Mrs Brower? Um, the bank manager's bosses. Yes. And he then said to you, I know you're both working and I didn't include this income in the figures whilst you're OS. Could you let me know approximately what you're earning as this will cover off your living expenses whilst there? And he then went on to ask you a series of questions about the investment properties that you had. Is that right? Yes. Uh, and he asked you at the end how easy it would be to offload the USA house given the depressed market over there and for how much. Do you see that? Yep. And then he said, I think they, who did you understand him to be referring to there? Sydney. Yes. I think they just need to confirm that the rental properties look after themselves and don't rely on the property for serviceability. Also try to determine the total extent of your individual liabilities. Now, you responded to this email and to the questions that the bank manager had asked you, and you've annexed that response to your statement as an extra 11, RAL 0002 Now, in this email, you answered the bank manager's questions about your uh, income and living expenses in the United States. Yes. And you asked the questions about the investment properties. Yes. Uh, uh, and then the bank manager responded to this email a few days later in your annexure 12. RAL 0002 1645. So having received your answers, he said to you, there's been a bit of back and forth discussion with Sydney 
but it would appear that we'll get an approval for the property purchase, although not officially approved as yet. Sydney are of the opinion that we should reassess the initial limit of the loan and look to utilise some of the available funds now rather than retain them for livestock purchases when you are looking to return to full control of Kaiora. So on that basis they would provide a facility of 3.7 million, refinance the main loan at approximately 800,000 balance with an additional 2.9 million for the property purchase at this stage. The 200,000 facility remains in place, making 3.7 million plus 200,000 total facilities of 3.9. Then in March 2011, when the lease expires, provide an increase for livestock purchases based on your plans and the cattle market at that time. Then he goes on to assess whether you have sufficient cash reserves to allow for the settlement and says, until the lease expires, there'll be a loan limit of 3.7 million. Do you see that? Yes. Uh, let me know how you feel about this proposal. Sydney actually suggested a limit of 3.6 million, but that is cutting it too fine. Now, uh, based on this email, what was your understanding of what the situation would be when you returned to Australia and wanted to restock Kyora? and start stocking Jamboree with breeders? That there was $300,000 available to us, all we need to do is ask. Now, did you think that without that $300,000, uh, you would be able to execute your plan of stocking Kyora and stocking Jamboree? No. In your mind, what did the deal to purchase Jamboree hinge on? It hinged on the bank providing another $300,000 to stock it. Okay. Now, in January 2010, did you sign a letter of offer from Rabobank for $3.7 million? Yes. And you've annexed that letter of offer to your statement? Yes. And when did you settle on the property? August 2010. Uh, and why the delay? Uh, there was... They had to split it, take Paul's portion off, and then the council insisted that we have some um, emergency services road or an easement or something, and they take a long time to get their paperwork together. And in the lead up to the settlement, did the bank manager talk to you about there being a shortfall in the funds? Yes, he did. Uh, what did he say to you? He said that. Um, we would have to provide an, uh, uh, about $60,000 of our own funds for settlement because the new facility didn't account for it. And what did you think about that? Well, I wasn't very impressed. I thought that we had borrowed enough money to cover all the costs associated with buying this property. So that we had <clears throat> our cash to begin again with. And did you find money for the shortfall? Yes, we used our own. And where did you find that from? On management deposits. Mm -hmm. And once the property settled, did you enter into a lease back with the vendor? Yes. And what was the term of that lease? Two years. And the annual rent? 170000 Okay. And at that point, having settled in uh, August 2010, what was your intention about when you would move back to Australia? We'd been talking about moving back in around June of 2011. The children would have finished their school year and been on summer vacation then. We could have all packed up, said goodbye, um, that sort of thing. Yeah, so that's when we planned. And what did you anticipate the position with the Kaiora lease would be at the time that you were coming back in June 2011? That we would renegotiate for the further two years. Hmm. Then in December 2010, having settled in August 2010, was there flooding in the area where Kaiora is located? Yes, in December and January of 2010-11, there was severe flooding there. What do you remember about that flooding? I've got some fantastic photos. <laughs> um, they evacuated the whole town for about 14 days. The water was higher than it's ever been. They jet skied from our cattle yards clear to town without incurring, 
without running into a fence. So it was fairly severe. It, you know, they were out of power. A bit catastrophic, really. It wrecked the fellow's crops. Mm. So did it affect the lessee at Kaiora? It did. That portion, that portion that he was farming on, he had lost two crops mm. on it, and he decided it wasn't viable to keep going. So did he decide to stop the lease? Yes, he wasn't going to renew. And from when? March. And what position did that put you in? Tough. Were you able to uh, service the repayments on the loan without that lease income? We did. It wasn't easy, but we did. Mm. And when you learned that the lessee would not continue with the lease, uh, did you tell the bank manager? Yeah, as soon as we learned of it. And you've annexed your email to him as annexure 14 to your statement, RAL 0002 This is your email to the bank manager on the 12th of January 2011. Hi, I'd love to say Happy New Year, but you might not be thinking like that at the moment. We've been keeping up with the happenings over there through Friends, Facebook and the news station's websites. Our thoughts and prayers are continually on the people at home and hope you are all coping with the mess that's unfolding. Adrian and I hope you and your family are safe and dry. We are astounded by the events that have occurred in the last two weeks. We are saddened and disheartened but aren't missing the sandflies. I'm writing in regard to money as well. We've received news that the lessee on Kaiora isn't renewing his lease. He's struggling to find enough cattle to stock his places and with the road messed up, he's feeding cattle that should have been gone long ago. So we are finding ourselves with quite a question, how to make ends meet without the income of our lease. I just wanted you to know what we are up against and ask for your suggestions for our options. We are happy to put out to put someone's cattle on Kaiora. In fact, we're feeling fairly desperate at this very moment. I'm sure there is an answer out there and we will be looking for it. As we just found this out, we are still a bit stunned and confused, but we will be talking with you as soon as possible. I'm sure that you have plenty to think about right now. Stay dry and safe. That was your email to the bank manager, Mrs Brow? Yes. After this, how quickly did you return to Australia? We left America on the 15th of March and arrived on the 17th. And after your return, the lessee moved off Kaiora? Yes. And your financial situation at that time, what was it like? Pretty dire. There wasn't a lot of money there. And in the weeks after your return, uh, did the bank manager come to Kaiora to visit you? Yes, he did. Did he come with another person from the bank? He did. Who was that? Greg Brady. And what do you remember about that visit? <laughs> um, it was tense. Our bank manager was tense. Um, but he told us that he was no longer going to be in the Dolby branch and that Greg was taking over. Mm -hmm. Now, around this time, uh, either in this visit or around the visit, did you ask Mr Brady for access to the $300,000? Yes. And what was his response? Um, he told us that we would have to sell a property in order to get the $300,000. All right. Uh, now, uh, he, you say he told you that you had to sell a property. Um, was there an amount of money that he told you you had to pay, uh, agree to pay, in order to get the three hundred thousand dollars? Three million. All right. So you could have the three hundred thousand dollars on condition that you agreed to pay three million dollars by when? The end of June, twenty thirteen, I think. So within about two years. Yes. Was that the basis on which you'd originally understood that you would be given the $300,000? Absolutely not. Why, why would we have borrowed $3 million if we had it to just give it back to them in two years? 
And how did you feel about this when Mr Brady told you this was the position? I was frightened, panicked. How are we going to do this? And then I was mad. Because we're farmers. Our business is farming. That's what we're good at. Their business is money. And I trusted them. I put them out there to other people. I recommended them. That isn't what I had come to expect from them. And do you remember signing a document by which you agreed that you would receive the $300,000 only on condition that you'd pay back three million in two years? Yes, I do. And did you feel you had a choice as to whether to sign that document? No. I think we had $5 or something in our working account. It wasn't very much. We just were, we felt desperate. I felt desperate. That, you know, we, we had kids in boarding school or going to boarding school. They had to eat as well. Yeah, we, hadn't, we had really nothing to go on. And by this time, were there also other external factors that were impacting on your financial situation? Yes. What were they? The flood definitely put the skids under what we considered fixed income for a little while. Um, not long, in, not far into 2011, there was a ban on live export of cattle to Indonesia. So those cattle that were traditionally getting on a boat and going across were then coming into our traditional markets, so prices were going lower. And the feedlots were, had increased the, their bottom weight into entry to the feedlot, so we were having to put more weight on the cattle, which takes more time. Did you have any discussions with Mr Brady about whether you could have access to any hardship arrangement? I asked, yes. And what was his response? He told me he didn't know anything about them and he didn't know why a bank would enter into such an arrangement. Now, at some point after this, did Mr Brady tell you that someone else from the bank would also now be involved in the management of your file? Yes, sometime later, yeah. And who was that? Bob Ohl. And did you ever meet Mr Ohl? Oh, yeah. And where did you meet him? At my house. Okay. And how many times did he come to your house? Twice. And what do you recall of those visits, Mrs. Brow? That I was surprised he wasn't carrying a baseball bat. Can you tell us a bit about the discussions you had with Mr. Ohl in these meetings? Mr. Ohl didn't say a lot. Greg was usually the speaker. It was like he was the speaker and Mr. Ohl was the enforcer. So they brought along their bully. All he ever said when we questioned him and we asked him point blank, why are you doing this? what's going on, what's changed. Like there was no beating around the bush as to, oh, please give us more time, do this, do that. We asked straight out, what's going on? Just tell us. And all he said was, you need to get professional advice. So as the deadline approached of June 2013 for you to make the payment of $3 million, were you able to make the payment? No. Did you ask for an extension? Yes. And did the bank give you an extension? Yes, until the following June. And were you continuing to make your interest payments through this time? Yes, we were. And then by June 2014, had you by then been able to raise the $3 million? No. And what happened after you didn't meet that deadline? Our account was frozen. So anyone that we had written checks to for the end of the financial year, any money that was coming in was any money, well, the money didn't go out and the money that went in didn't come back to us either. And what were the consequences of that for you and your husband? Well, we left a lot of people swinging for quite a, quite a long time, which wasn't, which didn't sit well with us. And obviously it's a small town. We knew what was going on. We weren't the only people in our town that this was happening to by the same bank. Um, so with flooding and all that sort of stuff, there were a lot of bills that weren't getting paid in town, so it was really hard on the whole community. And at some point around this time, did Rabobank begin applying default interest to your facility? Yes, uh, I believe immediately. 
Do you recall what the interest rate was? I believe it was 10%. Okay. And then early the following year, in 2015, <coughs> did Rabobank ask you to attend a farm debt mediation? No, they didn't ask us. They invited us. And what, what do you mean? What's the distinction that you draw there? <laughs> it's the only thing that we were ever invited to that we really didn't want to go to. It was, it was a nice way for them to say, come and meet with us so we can take what you have. Did you agree to go? Yes, we did. Did you get a lawyer? We had a legal aid solicitor. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you recall, did the lawyer request documents and information from Rabobank in the lead up to the mediation? Yes, and so did our farm agribusiness strategist asked for documents to prepare our case. And did Rabobank provide those documents and that information? No. Did you attend the farm debt mediation in May 2015? Yes, I did. Did you have to pay for the mediator? Yes. Do you remember how much you paid? I think we paid around $1,500 for him. And where was the mediation held? Toowoomba. Did you travel to Toowoomba? Yes. Did you need to stay in Toowoomba? Yes. And you paid for accommodation? Yes. And what do you... I'm sorry? And meals. Yes. Yep. And what do you recall about the day, the day of the farm debt mediation? It was cold and grey and I didn't feel well. <laughs> um, we were asked to arrive at 8 o'clock. We spent the whole previous day from 8 o'clock till 5 o'clock with the legal aid solicitor and our ag agribusiness man uh, strategist. We were asked to arrive at 8 and that the bank would be arriving shortly thereafter and we would get into it. Um, we arrived at 8 o'clock. We were put in a room with a big long table like this. We sat on one side and when the bank got there about 9 o'clock, they sat on the other side. Um, we weren't allowed to leave. If we wanted a drink of water, someone would bring it into us. They brought us coffee, they brought us morning tea, they brought us lunch. They brought us afternoon tea. When I suggested, can we just go for a walk and get out of here and have a think about this? They're like, oh, no, 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 we don't really want you to leave because we would really like to get this wrapped up. Um, like, it was really stressful. It, it felt like that we had to give up everything in order, in order to get out unscathed. But that wasn't going to happen. We knew we'd have to... Um, Compromise, and we were prepared for that. We were prepared to accept our responsibility in what was going on. And did you, by the end of the day, reach an agreement with Rabobank? Yes, we did. And what was that agreement? Um, it was that we would sell the Jamboree property for not less than $2 million by the end of 2015. So that was just pausing there. Uh, this is in May 2015. Yes. So you agreed to sell it for not less than $2 million by the end of 2015? Yes. And we ag agreed to be refinanced to the sum of $4 million by June of the next year. And when you say you agreed to be refinanced, do you mean by that that you agreed to pay the bank $4 million by the middle of next year? Yes. So just so that I understand, um, you agreed to sell Jamboree for not less than $2 million by the end of the year and give the proceeds of sale to the bank? Yes, we gave them the net proceeds, so minus the solicitors and agency fees and things like that, that went to the bank. They took that from the $4 million, so we still had, excuse me, a million and something. To go. To go, yeah. And that had to be paid by the middle of the next year. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And what about the default interest that you've been charged? What happened with that? We asked that it be reimbursed. And what did they say to that? They said yes, as long as we would continue to pay, continue to pay the interest. And I think it was an adjusted amount of interest, but I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And after the mediation, did you sell Jamboree? Yes, we did. How much did you sell it for? 2.4. And did those proceeds go to Rabobank? Yep. And did you then attempt to refinance with another bank? Yes, we did. How did you go with that? Not very good. Um, did you manage to refinance with a non-bank institution? We did. 
we um, refinanced with a private lender to bridge the gap. And was that a short or a long-term loan? Short term. It was a six-month contract. And do you recall the interest rate on that? Nine percent. And did you subsequently refinance with another bank? Yes, with NAB. Okay. Now, Mrs Brow, what, what's been the financial impact on you and your family of purchasing Jamboree and the events that followed your purchase of Jamboree? <clears throat> We would be probably at least a million dollars in the red to where we were when we started. Um, yeah, it's been a great financial and emotional cost. You mentioned emo emotional. What's the non-financial impact of all of this been on you? <laughs> it nearly wrecked us. We didn't talk to each other much. There was nothing good to talk about. Um, we had kids away at school. We didn't have the money to go and visit them. They were two and a half hours away from us and we didn't get, we didn't watch football, we didn't go to debating, we didn't bring them home as often as they probably needed. Um, our kids were very understanding, like we talk to them and we tell them what we're doing and what's happening, but we tried to shield them from the real nasty stuff. Um, but we couldn't understand it, so we couldn't answer their questions very well. Um, I was depressed, clinically so. Um, I was mad. I still am. I'm really mad. You, like I said before, we trust these people because that's their business. They're there to help us. Their paraphernalia still to this day on their websites and their brochures say that they're here to help you, they're in it with you, let's get on and, and make a good business and all this warm and fluffy stuff. But when it came right down to it, they weren't. And Greg Brady said exactly that. When I said, you are in this with us, the bank is in this with us, and he said, I'm not in business with you. So, so yes, I was really angry. Having gone to Rabobank as a bank specialising in agricultural finance, um, how do you feel about your experience with Rabobank? I'm really sad. I recommended those jerks to other people and said what a great experience they were and how understanding they were. That That's... They've ruined, I trusted them. And I'm, yeah, they, they put us backwards. They came hunting for us. They came looking for us to buy this block. And 12 months later, they wanted us to pay them back more than we'd borrowed. I don't understand. I don't understand. Thank you, Mrs. Brower. I have no further questions, Commissioner. Thank you. Mr. McGrath. No questions, Commissioner. Thank you very much, Mr. McGrath. You may step down.